Okay, so this is another discussion on our topic on business combination. Today I'm going to discuss, no, still, we're still on the subsequent to date of acquisition, but this time we're going to discuss subsequent to date of acquisition, but with intercompany transactions. Now there are different possible intercompany transactions, no, intercompany transactions on inventories, which I will discuss today. Property, plant and equipment, okay, intercompany investments, okay, on bonds, on stocks, on preferred shares, and so on and so forth. But for this subject, okay, we are going to discuss intercompany transaction on property, plant, and equipment. And for today, we're going to start on intercompany transactions on inventories. Okay, so what do we expect from this subject or this topic? Basically, palitan nga muna natin yung kulay. Madugo na yung topic. Dapat wag ng red. Yan. Let's try green. Para College of Accountancy. Okay? So, let's try to understand. Okay? What do you expect from this from this discussion? Um, normally, you have here the parent. And then, you have here the subsidiary. No? Okay? After the date of acquisition, they're going to continue with their operations. Okay? And in the process, they're going to have their own sales. And syempre, my cost of sales. And then, you now have your cost of goods sold. Okay. Now, let's assume that the parent has sales of 100,000 and cost of goods sold of, let's just say, 50,000. Okay. So, now you have cost of goods sold of, ay, bakit cost of goods sold? Dapat ito ay gross profit. Wala na. Magte-take to ba kaya ako? Hindi, burahin na lang natin. So now you have 50,000. For the subsidiary, let's assume that the sales of the subsidiary is 80,000 and the cost of sales is, let's say, um, ano kaya, 30,000. Oh, yeah, laki ng markup, ano? 30,000. So we now have your gross profit at Ayos. Parehong 50,000 pesos. If you get the total or consolidated, you will get 180,000 pesos for your sales. And this one will be 80,000 pesos for a total gross profit of 100,000. So as a combined entity, this will be the amount of sales, cost of sales and gross profit that they will report. Okay. Now this is under the assumption that all of the sales made by the parent and all of the sales made by the subsidiary are to outsiders. Ibig sabihin, third persons. Okay. Wala silang benta or sales sa isa't isa. Okay. So this one is correct. Now what if during the year or subsequent to the date of acquisition, okay, aside from this 100,000, the parent sold 20,000, ayan, so magiging 120 na, no? The parent sold 20,000 to the subsidiary. So sales will increase by 20,000. And this one, assuming the subsidiary is using the periodic inventory system, this will be recorded as part of the purchases, which will increase your cost of sales. So, padadagdagan ngayon ito ng 20,000. Okay? If you are going to add that, if you're going to add that, okay, you will now have 200,000 in your sales and you will have, ano, cost of sales of, magkano to? Um, 100,000. Now, this is under the assumption that the entire 20,000 is sold to outsiders. So, meron kang 100, ayan, 100,000 din dyan. Pero take note, okay, since this is now a combined entity, you cannot re record sales. You cannot record sales made to yourself or purchases, okay, made from yourself. So, kailangan tanggalin natin yan. Para correctly stated yung ating sales at saka yung cost of sales. Pati na rin yung gross profit natin. Okay, now what if hindi naman nabenta lahat yung 20,000 na yan? 
uh, let's say half of that was sold so yung half nandiyan na no and half of that was left in your cost of sales or in your inventories patay ang mangyayari ngayon ay yung inventories mo overstated na kapag nag consolidate ka okay so aside from eliminating your intercompany sales and purchases you also have to eliminate the deferred gross profit attached to your ending inventory Ano yung deferred gross profit na yun? It's like this kasi. For example, the parent normally sells no, to the subsidiary at let's say, let's say 20% gross profit rate. 20%. Ayan. So that's the gross profit rate. Okay, so balik tayo dito. So yung 20,000 na yan, kung ang gross profit rate mo ay 20%. So, yung sales niyan, yung cost and gross profit, which is 20% of sales, this one will be 80%. No? So, it was sold at 20,000 times 20%. That will be 4,000. Okay. So, ano ngayon ang cost nito? This one will be 16,000. Okay, now half of that was sold and half of that was left in your inventory. So 10,000 was sold. Okay, and 10,000 was so that one will be your dapat yan lang yung sales mo. Okay, and in your inventory from the purchasing entity may 10,000 ka. Take note that the cost of this 80% is 8,000. Mm. Ayan, so meron kang 2,000 dito. Ano pa tong mga ito? Okay, let me explain. When the parents sold 20,000 pesos worth of inventory, no, and recorded that as sales, to your subsidiary, nag-record siya ng profit na 4,000. When the subsidiary sold half of that, which is 10,000, okay, ang na-realize lang ng parent dapat up, at, uh, out of this 4,000 ay 2,000. Kasi ang general rule natin dito, okay, ang puputa lang sa gross profit, okay, of the combined entity are those profits coming from sales made to outside parties. So, as a combined entity, this is the only sale or this is the only profit that you should realize. But the parent already realized 4,000. So, you have to eliminate this one because this is still unrealized, also known as deferred gross profit in the ending inventory. Also, in the process, no, in the process of eliminating these, you will be correcting the value of your inventory. Why? Because when this was acquired, okay, the subsidiary recorded the purchase at 10, no, 20,000 pesos, when in fact, the cost should be 16 lang, okay? So, ganun din. Nung nabenta yan, eto na ngayon yung naiwan, yung inventories. Okay? Now, stated at 10,000 when in fact, the cost of this should be 8,000. So, by eliminating this from your inventory, no? by eliminating this 2,000 from your inventory, you will be left with 8,000 as the real cost of your inventory. Okay, so yun. Now, this one is an example of a downstream sales. Now, when we say downstream sales, it's the parent okay, selling to the subsidiary. Okay, we also have upstream sales. Pag-usapan natin yan mamaya. Upstream sales is when the subsidiary will be selling to the parent. Is this relevant? Well, yes, because number one, when we talk about uh, computation of consolidated net income, Okay, um, for downstream sales, okay, the subsidiary will have no share no, in the realized and unrealized profits of the parent. But for upstream sales, my share na po si minority interest or your nicknas, no, non-controlling interest from the net assets of the subsidiary. Okay, so there will be differences in elimination entries aside from that computation of consolidated net income or consolidated net income as far as the parent is concerned, okay, or equity. Another term for that is equity holdings of the parent in the consolidated net income. Also, in your minority interest net income or NIS, your non-controlling interest in the net 
income of the subsidiary. Now, if these things are affected, then we expect that the consolidated retained earnings will also be affected. Your minority interest will also be affected. Okay po. Actually, pwede natin i-shortcut to, pero sige, i-longcut na muna natin. Now, let's continue. Okay. Intercompany inventory sales okay, at a profit or loss. So, normally, companies sell inventory items to their affiliates at a markup. Let's talk about this muna. Now, normally, when we say markup, okay, the percentage is based on cost. And when we say gross profit rate, okay, that rate is based on that rate is based on sales but there are some problems no that i see when when we talk about gross profit i mean gross profit based on cost uh, they're talking about markup or when we say markup based on sales uh, they're basically talking of the gross profit rate so when you read these problems you have to be cautious you focus on the substance but if the problem is silent okay just mentioned gross profit rate uh, definitely that will be based on sales okay when it used the term uh, markup uh, that rate should be based on cost magtaka ka na lang if the answer is not found in the choices okay baka naman binis niya sa sales so still kapain niyo pa rin Anyway, um, things to consider. Yeah, number one, elimination of the statement of comprehensive income effects of the intercompany sale in the period of sale. Removing, yeah, removing the sales revenue of the intercompany sale and the related cost of goods sold recorded by the selling affiliate. Okay, po, especially if they are using the perpetual inventory system. Now, for the periodic inventory system, okay, in the elimination of your sales in the process, you will also eliminate the intercompany purchases made by the buying affiliate. Okay, so, bakit ulit ganon? You cannot, no, as a combined entity, as one entity, you cannot report sales made to yourself. No, or purchases made from yourself. Yeah. So, tanggalin natin yun. And then, number two, elimination of any profit or loss on the intercompany sale from the inventory. Let me underline that. No. From the inventory. Sabi niya, any profit or loss. Ayan. Bakit? Kasi nga, for example, yung earlier example natin, the parents sold an inventory to the subsidiary at a markup. And then this inventory was not sold by the subsidiary. It wasn't sold to outside parties. Therefore, nasa inventory pa rin niya. Now, that inventory will be overstated by the profit reported by the selling affiliate or the parent. So, we have to eliminate that so that your inventories will not be overstated. So, sanya, on the statement of financial position that has not been confirmed or realized by resale. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Realized by resale. It wasn't sold to outsiders. Okay? So, dalawa lang pala eh. Now, are we saying there are only two elimination entries? Hindi naman. These are additional elimination entries from your earlier elimination entries. Okay? So, you have to eliminate this and intercompany sales and purchases. You have to eliminate the unrealized profits in the ending inventory. And, meron pa nga pangat to dyan eh, but it's not an elimination entry. Although, it's included as part of your elimination entries. This is when yung counterpart ng number 2 this is when you have to realize profits or losses naman okay assigned to your inventories from last year okay kasi if you defer them this year assuming they will be sold on the next year you also have to realize them okay and you have to record that amongst your elimination entries okay po anyway we'll have an example later okay now let's continue inventory report in the consolidated statement of financial position must be reported at cost Tama. to the consolidated entity. Therefore, if profits or losses have been recorded on the inventory acquired in an intercompany sale, those profits and losses must be eliminated in order to report the inventory on the consolidated statement of financial position at its cost to the consolidated entity. We already discussed this earlier. No? In short, 
you have to adjust your inventories at cost lang. Um, one of the questions that I normally get from this sir, sabi, profit or loss? How did that happen? For profit, okay lang. For example, the selling affiliate no, or the parent, ganun na lang tayo. The parent sold this at a markup, merong profit na naka-attach. Okay? But if it was sold at a loss, o di meron din tayong loss. For example, the cost is only 100,000 and it was sold at 80,000. May loss tayo na 20,000. Now, if that will not be adjusted, your inventory will now be understated. Okay? Inventory of the consolidated entity. Okay po? So, ayun. Downstream and upstream sale of inventory. Ang haba-haba naman ito. Okay, if you try to read this, <laughs> if you try to read this, ayan, dalaw lang naman yan. What is your downstream transaction? This is when, okay, the sale was made by the parent Okay, to the subsidiary. Okay, so, sino yung buyer? The subsidiary. Sino yung seller? It's the parent. So, that's your downstream transaction. Upstream transaction, okay, is when the parent is the buyer and the subsidiary is the seller. Okay, so, for consolidation purposes, profits or losses recorded in this type of sale, okay, should be eliminated. Uh, ayan, will only, it will only be realized once it is sold to outsiders. Okay, so, ayan. There's a part here wherein, ayun. Until the point of resale, all intercompany profits must be deferred. Ayan. Consolidated net income must be based on the realized, take note, a realized income of the selling affiliate. If the intercompany sales of merchandise are made by the parent, Okay, or by a wholly owned subsidiary, there is no effect on any non-controlling interest in net income or loss because the selling affiliate does not have minority shareholders. So, ayun, diniscuss na niya. Okay, mamaya may, may detailed explanation tayo dito. Pero, just to summarize, no, di ba, your your profits no the profit of the subsidiary is normally uh, shared by the parent and minority interest but if the subsidiary is wholly owned okay syempre because there is no minority interest yun yung sinasabi nito because there's no minority interest okay the entire deferred gross profit or profit realized gross profit coming from that sale will go to your consolidated net income what about downstream Okay, eh, lalo na yung downstream sales, whether there is minority interest, okay, they don't share kasi in the profits of the parent. Laging buo yung net income ng parent na pumupunta sa consolidated net income. Ang nahahati lang will be your subsidiary net income. Okay, so, ayun. Uh, what's this? When a company sells merchandise to an affiliate, one of two situations results. Okay, the merchandise is resold to outsiders during the same period, or the merchandise is resold to outsiders during the next period, resulting to unrealized profit in the ending inventory of the buying affiliate. Pwede rin combination, no? Like for example, okay, a merchandise, a part of that merchandise was resold to outsiders, and a part of that merchandise Okay, stays in the ending inventory of the buying affiliate. Okay. Now, let's have an example. Let's use the example coming from our previous discussion. Business combination subsequent to date of acquisition. We'll just add some additional information. So, and the illustration where parent company purchases 80% of the outstanding shares of the subsidiary company will be used. Okay, so at all, this is the additional information. Assume, gaya nyo, okay, mapag assume. Assume that on March 31, parent company sold goods costing 12,000 to a, to subsidiary company for 20,000. Subsidiary company consequently Sold all the goods to outsiders for 25,000. Okay, so let's try to understand this. The parent sold goods. So this one is an example of 
downstream sales, okay? And during the year 2011-2011, the subsidiary sold all, sabi niya, sold all of the goods for 25. So, it was sold in the same year. So, let's try to understand this. You have the parent, okay, reporting sales amounting to 20,000 where the cost is only 12,000. So, you now have a gross profit of what? 8,000. Okay po. Now, if you want to compute further, you can compute for your gross profit rate. By dividing, ayan, what's your gross profit rate? 8 divided by 8,000 divided by 20,000. Okay, so parang, tama ba? 40%. Okay, 12 divided by 20, that will be 60%. Gross profit rate, ha? So, gross profit rate is based on sales. Okay po. So, ayun. And then, the subsidiary, this one, was sold. No, This one was sold for 25000 What's the cost of this in the books of the subsidiary? Yung sales ng parent na binili ni subsidiary, yan yung purchases niya na magiging cost of goods sold then. So, this one is 20000 so, there is a profit amounting to 5,000 pesos. Okay? As a combined entity, this is already sold to outsiders, di ba? So, the parent can now realize this 8,000 plus okay, the profit of the subsidiary, which is 5,000. Okay? So, the total is now... How much? Oh, sige, itotal lang muna natin to. You have 45... Okay, and then you have 20 plus 12, you now have 32,000 pesos. So, 45 minus 32, that will now be 13,000. Tama ba yung 13,000 na yan? The answer is yes. Okay, kumita siya ng 5,000, si subsidiary. And the parent, okay, realized a profit of 8,000 because the entire sales to the subsidiary was sold to outsiders. But, okay. As a combined entity, although this is correct, you will notice that your sales, okay, of 20,000 from the parent was made to the subsidiary. So, overstated ngayon yung sales mo, overstated din yung purchases mo. Okay, dapat as a combined entity, your sales will only be composed of your sales made to outsiders. And that will be your 25,000. And your cost... Siyempre, should only be composed of your true cost when it was acquired. Kasi ito parang nag-transfer lang. Eh. So, you have to eliminate this and eliminate this. In your consolidated financial statements, your sales should only be 25,000 and 12,000. And still, that is 13,000 pesos. Okay po, so let's continue. These are now the entries made in the books of the parent and subsidiary. Debit to cash and credit sales for the sales and no binili yan ni subsidiary. Debit to inventory, assuming they're using perpetual inventory method. Ayun, nakalagay pala dun. Debit to inventory or you debit purchases. Okay, purchases kapag periodic naman. And credit cash. Also, because you're using perpetual inventory, you're going to record cost of sales and inventory. Okay, so, ayun. Now, when this is sold, you will have a debit to cash and credit sales of 25 and you record the cost of sales of 20 and a credit to inventory at 20. Okay po, so these are the journal entries found in the books of the subsidiary. Now, if you try to put them together, the only sales, no, the true sales made to outside parties is this one. Okay. What about this? This is also sales, but this one is made to your subsidiary. So that one has to be eliminated. Okay, so ayun. What about the cost? Okay, this is the real cost of sales when it was acquired by the parent. Okay, this one, this cost of sales right here, 
is not the real cost of sales, no? Kasi transfer lang yan, eh. Coming from the parent, okay? Going to your subsidiary. So, let's try to eliminate that, okay? Ay, ito, let's try to understand this. Ay, nagawa ko na pala ito kanina. Na-excite ako, na-discuss ko na siya in advance. Nandyan din lang naman pala. Okay, so, pwede na tayong mag-fast forward. What will now be your elimination entries? Okay, one elimination entry. Debit sales and credit to cost of goods sold. This one will be found in your elimination working paper. Okay, it will not adjust the sales of the parent, okay, nor the cost of goods sold of the subsidiary. In their respective books, nandun pa rin siya. Okay, ang ina-adjust lang natin will be the sales and cost of sales of the combined entity. Okay, so ayun. Just to eliminate the intercompany sales and purchases. In some books, instead of using cost of goods sold, they use purchases. Okay, so you can also use purchases. Kapag periodic yan. Purchases. Okay, as long as your purchases are not yet close to your cost of goods sold. Okay, so ayun. Now, you also have downstream intercompany sale of inventory, but this time, sabi niya, okay, the intercompany sale with unrealized intercompany profit in ending inventories. Now, this one is an example wherein there is an unsold merchandise at the end of the year. Okay, so let's try to read this. Unsold merchandise purchased from an affiliated company would result to an overstatement in the ending inventory. Pag hindi siya na ebenta, okay? The overstatement is equal to the amount of the selling affiliates unrealized intercompany profit included in the ending inventory. This overstatement is cancelled through appropriate working paper elimination entries in the preparation of consolidated financial statements. Let's have an example. Assume again, ayan, sanay na tayo dyan. Assume again that on March 31, 2011, parent company sold goods costing 12,000 to subsidiary company for 20,000. Subsidiary this time consequently reports 8,000 of these goods purchased from parent company in their ending inventory on December 31, 2010. Parent, okay, sold 20,000, so that's now your sales, 20,000 with a cost of 12,000, so your gross profit for this transaction realized by the parent is 8,000. And computed earlier, this one is 40%. Now, uh, subsidiary, Samia wasn't able to sell all of this. Okay, Samia, subsidiary this time consequently reports 8,000 of these goods purchased. So, your subsidiary will record a purchase, okay? The purchase was 20,000. And in the ending inventory, 8,000 of this, okay, is left. So, ibig sabihin, they were able to sell 12,000. Oh, ayan. Now, take note, this 8,000, okay, is attached to your 20. So, if you were asked how much of this 8,000 was realized during the year when the inventory was sold, you now have to prorate. Okay, oh, long method tayo. 20,000, you will have 8,000. What's this? This is 40%. Okay, so what is now the intercompany profit on this ending inventory? You simply multiply, no? 40% times 8,000, that will be 3,200. What is 40% of 12,000? It's the difference of these two. 4,800. So this is your deferred gross profit. This is now your realized gross profit for the year. How much was realized by the parent? 8,000. But the combined entity should only realize 4,800. Okay. Next, how much is the reported inventory? 8,000. But this one includes, okay, this one includes uh, the uh, 
um, deferred gross profit. Ay, wait lang. Purchase, mali pala. This one is the gross profit. Eto pala. How much is the ending inventory? It's 8,000. But this one includes 3,200. The real cost of this inventory is how much? 4,800. Wait lang, don't get confused. No? Sir, litong-lito na ako. Okay, nakakalito talaga kasi nagkataon lang that the total gross profit okay, in the in the intercompany sale is equal to the ending balance of the inventory. Okay, so this one is the total gross profit. Yung mga yan. That's the profit attached to 20,000. This is the profit attached to the ending inventory. And this is the profit attached to your sales made to outsiders. Okay, so now, where am I? Aside from adjusting the gross profit reported by the parent, okay, by removing how much? 3,200. We're going to defer that so that in the end, the consolidated entity will have 4,800 na realized profit. Aside from adjusting that, no, we should also adjust the ending balance. Because this one should be 8,000 minus 32. The ending inventory should be 4,800. Okay, so how do we do that? First things first, okay? You, ano to? Ayan, na-discuss na pala natin. Na-excite na naman ako. So, you have your intercompany sales. <laughs> okay, that's the total ending inventory. That's now your cost of goods sold. Anyway, let's go to your, ayan, your elimination entry. First, let's eliminate the intercompany transaction. The sales made by the parent to the subsidiary and the cost of goods sold, okay, of this sale. Ayan. Or this could also be the purchase made by the subsidiary, diba? Sales by the parent, purchase by the subsidiary. Babalik tarin mo lang yan. Sir, why are we using cost of goods sold? Kasi na close na po yung purchase sa cost of goods sold. Okay, so ayun, if we're using perpetual, oh, yun na yung explanation niya. Aside from that, okay, ano to? This is the entry to defer. Ayan, the profit attached to your ending inventory. Why? Because the parent reported 8,000 when in fact, not the entire 20,000 was sold outside. Okay, may naiwan po na 8,000. So that is now your deferred profit in the ending inventory. Okay, so ano yung shortcut nito? This is actually the ending balance of your inventory times your gross profit rate. Okay, so this is 8,000 times 40%. Okay, so why are we crediting inventory? Because your inventory are, is your inventory is stated at 8,000 when the real cost of that should be 8,000 minus 3,200. That should be 4,800. Okay po. So, may i-correct na yan. Sir, why are we debiting cost of goods sold? Okay, so, ganito kasi yan. If your ending inventory is overstated, your cost of goods sold is understated. So, we're going to debit cost of goods sold. And in effect, okay, if you increase your cost of goods sold, if you increase your cost of goods sold, your net income will go down. Okay? Which is also the expected effect of deferring your profits. Na-realize na siya, i-defer mo. So, mababawasan yung profit mo. Okay? But we don't use debit or credit deferred gross profit. Okay? May mga books na or may mga handouts na ako nakitang ganun. We don't do that anymore. Okay, diretso na tayo doon sa account na naapektuhan nito. And in this case, you have your cost of goods sold. Okay, so that is your downstream sales. If you are going to compute for your consolidated net income, okay, as you can see, ito given na to dati. Okay, um, that's the parent's net income. That's the parent's reported net income. Review lang, pag sinabi natin reported net income, it includes the dividend income received from the subsidiary. That's why you have here the deduction no? oh, yan. of the parent share in the subsidiary's declared dividends. If the problem states parent's net income from its own operation, okay, this means that 
pag own operation, this one is already deducted. The parent share in the subsidiaries dividends. Anyway, let's continue. You have your subsidiaries net income, amortization of inventory. Okay, uh, na discuss na rin natin yan. And then you also have the amortization of um, allocation to the property, plant, and equipment. You know, that's just a fair market value over book values. Okay. Na-discuss na natin to last time. Ito ang i-discuss natin. Okay. Unrealized intercompany profit on downstream sales. Okay. Why is this a deduction no, to the equity holdings of the parent in the net income? Because, okay, in the parent's net income, this includes the 8,000 profit reported coming from the intercompany sale. Okay, and since not all of that no was sold by the subsidiary, hindi natin lahat dapat i-realize yang 8,000 na yan. Okay, so we have to defer the unsold inventories. Bakit ulit? Oh, basic lang yung yung theory natin kanina, no? Um, we only report profits made to outsiders. Ayan, outside parties. It's not yet sold to outside parties. So this is not yet part of our profit. It's already included here. So let's remove that. Okay. Next. Take note that it's only deducted against this portion, no, against the parents' net income. Why? Because this is downstream sales. This means that, okay, your subsidiary or your minority interest doesn't have any share, no, in the parents' net income. Ganun yun. It's the parent, no? It's the parent that has a share in the subsidiary's net income. Pero never the subsidiary. Kaya basta pag downstream sales, yun na lang, shortcut. Basta pag downstream sales, the entire realized gross profit or deferred gross profit will be deducted against the parent's net income. Okay, so siya po ito. Is this affected? No, it's not affected. Okay po. Ayan, so... There you go. Screenshot. Okay, now let's continue. Okay, intercompany profit in beginning and ending inventories. Earlier, we don't have any beginning inventories coming from the intercompany transaction. But now, what if there is a beginning inventory? No, there is an inventory coming from intercompany transaction which is found in the beginning and ending inventory. Tama ba? Sir, paano nangyari yun? Okay. Like for example, on the second year, okay, your ending inventory last year will be the beginning inventory for the second year or for this year. Okay. And then, meron na namang intercompany sale this year, so may maiwan na naman sa ending inventory natin. Okay. So, ayan. Let's try to read this. Eliminating entries for intercompany profits in beginning inventories of the purchasing affiliate should be prepared. Assuming the first in first out basis of accounting for inventory. Let me read that again. Assuming the first in first out basis. First in first out basis. This means that your earlier inventories or earlier purchases will be sold first not before the later purchases. The intercompany profit on purchasers' beginning inventories is realized through sales of the merchandise to outsiders in the following period. It is assumed that unless specified, only the intercompany profits in ending inventories from the current year transactions remain unrealized at the end of the period. You have to be cautious with this statement, sabi niya, unless specified. Okay, ganito kasi yan. Okay, for example, year 1, then year 2, and then year 3. Okay, your ending balance, no? your ending balance for year 1 will be the beginning balance for year 2. Tama po? Ayan. And in year 2, we are going to assume that this one will be sold first, no? Before your year 2 purchases. So now you have ending balance for year 2. Which will now be the beginning balance for year 3. And so on and so forth. Okay. Now, 
because of this first in first out basis and because we're going to assume that this ending balance in year one will be sold in year two whatever is your deferred gross profit in year one will be your realized gross profit in year two and your ending balance in year two will now be the source of your deferred gross profit assuming that the entire no inventory is sold on the third year that will now be your realized gross profit for the third year oh ganito na lang a shortcut pa natin basta the deferred gross profit from inventories in year one will be realized in year two any deferred gross profit in year two will be realized in year three okay so ano ay ano kaya magpapahirap doon Sir, computation po ng deferred gross profit and realized gross profit. Okay. Your deferred gross profit will come from your ending balance of your inventory. While your realized gross profit will come from the beginning balance. Okay. So, to compute for the deferred gross profit and realized gross profit, you simply multiply this by your gross profit rate times your gross profit rate. And ta-da! Tapos. Diba? So, kung continuing lang yung problem, lahat ng na-compute mong deferred gross profit for year 1, o di ba mo nang i-recompute. Ang computein mo na lang yung deferred gross profit for year 2. Ito na lang. Diba? So, ayun. Bakit? Ito, na-compute mo na last year. So, i-realize mo na lang yan. Now, let's go back. Sabi niya, unless is specified. There are some problems, no? There are some problems wherein, okay, the ending balance, kasi ganito yan, punta tayo sa year 2. You have the beginning balance and then you have your purchases for year 2 and then you have here your sales. Ganyan, di ba? Okay, normally, the beginning balance and purchases will be sold. Kung ano ang hindi na ibenta, we assume that that will come from your purchases and not from the beginning balance. Yun, kaya binanggit po yung first in, first out. But there are some problems wherein it's going to state that the ending balance of the inventory came from the purchases from outsiders. Outside pur uh, purchases, okay? You also have purchases coming from the parent, okay? And a part of that came from the beginning balance, Okay, now, assuming the gross profit rate is different this year and last year, iba ngayon ang computation. Okay, susundan mo po siya. Okay, so, ayan. Okay po. Now, let's continue. As a continuation of our previous illustration, assume that for 2012, oh, kanina 2011, now year 2 na tayo, 2012, the parents sold again merchandise to subsidiary for 50,000 at a markup no, markup dapat based on cost yan. From these sales, okay, 10,000 remained in the ending inventories of subsidiary on December 31, 2012. Ayan. So, let's try to understand this. So, you have the beginning inventory, 8,000. That's the ending inventory from last time. My sales siya na 50. Okay. And then you now have a total of 58. Wait lang. This is supposed to be purchases. Purchases for the subsidiary, sales for the um for the parent, ending inventory of 10, you unsold, and this is now your cost of goods sold. Okay. But ayo nang magsulat ng pen. Okay. Um let's see. Pero pakit. Ayo, napapahiya na ako. Ayun, okay. Okay, so gumana na. Now, let's continue. Paano na yun? Um, This is the beginning inventory of the subsidiary. Okay? And we already computed this. This is the true cost. This is the deferred gross profit last year. Deferred gross profit. Now, on the current year, ito na yung sinabi ko. Oh, 35, mali pala. Balik nga tayo. Ayan. 
Um, this one should not be marked up. Siguro marked up based on sales. It should be the gross profit rate na lang para hindi kayo malito. Anyway, one of the skills that you have to uh, develop pala before I forget, you should be able to convert no gross profit rate based on cost and your gross profit rate based on sales. Okay? Back and forth. You know. Ito, nagkamali lang ako sa problem. Dapat ito ay hindi marked up of 30. It should be gross profit rate of 30. Anyway, um, let's continue. So, the parent made sales. Okay, to the subsidiary. Okay, so, lalagay natin sales. This is the purchase of the subsidiary. Ayan, so, the beginning plus yung purchase niya na 50. So, this is now the total uh, goods available for sale in the books of the subsidiary. This one, since the gross profit rate no is 30%, ayan, 30%, 30% of 50 is 15. Ayan. So, yan na yung total na profit from the intercompany transfers from the beginning inventory and from the current year. Di ba? Parang hoka-boka lang pala to, no? And the real cost, as far as the parent is concerned, the cost of this 50 is 35. So, this is the total cost of goods available, total goods available for sale as far as the parent is concerned. Okay, or in there is a total profit attached to that, which is 18,200. Now, at the end of the year, okay, at the end of the year, out of this 58, 10,000 is found in the ending inventory. So, times 30%, that's now 3,000. This means that the cost is 7,000. So, this is the total amount that you can realize, no? But 7,000 is still unrealized. Yan na yung deferred gross profit natin. Ito yung magiging realized na yan. Coming from the beginning. Okay po. So you're now, you're now going to defer this. Ito na yung magiging total na realized. No, this is now your total cost pala. Ayan. Ito na yung total realized. So ito yung realized. Ito yung deferred natin. Okay? Medyo malabo yata. Sige, ulitin natin. Okay? Um, pag tinanong ka, year 2, how much will be your realized gross profit adjustment? Your answer will be 3,000. Hmm. Okay, let's try to compute that. Ang realized gross profit will come from... Saglit lang. Nalito na naman ako. Ulit-ulit. Okay. Bakit 3,000? 3,200 pala dapat yun. Ayan. Ulitin natin. Your realized gross profit will come from the beginning balance. And deferred gross profit will come from your ending balance. Okay. <laughs> Times your gross profit rate. Hmm. So dito, okay, your beginning balance is so na 8,000 in the books of the subsidiary, the ending balance is 10,000 in the books of the subsidiary times your gross profit rate. Okay. Last year, the gross profit rate is 40%. This year, the gross profit rate is 30%. Ayan. So, 8 times 4, that's 3,200. 10,000 times um, 30%, you now have 3 Last year, okay, ibinawas natin ito. Diba? Because this is your deferred gross profit last year, which will be realized this year. So, kung ito binawas last year, this year, idadagdag mo yan kasi i-realize mo. Ang ibabawas mo naman ngayon will be your deferred gross profit, which is now 3 thousand. Okay, so your elimination entry, number one, to eliminate the intercompany sales and purchases. Okay, now this one, okay, saan to? This is to, um, to adjust no, your ending inventory by its overstatement. Okay, and to make an entry for your deferred gross profit. Yeah, paano ba yun? Okay, so sabi natin your ending inventory, let's go back, is overstated by 
3,000, the real cost of that is just 7,000, yung pagbebenta ni parent. Naging 10,000 la yan sa books ni subsidiary kasi may kasamang profit yan. How much? Which is 3,000. So, to adjust that, you credit inventory of 3,000. Sir, why are we debiting cost of goods sold? Because if your ending inventory is overstated, your cost of goods sold will be understated. So, you have to add no, dagdagan mo yung cost of goods sold. And in the process, by increasing your cost of goods sold, okay, in the process, bumababa ngayon yung consolidated net income natin. Okay, so, ganun naman talagang effect ng deferred gross profit. It was previously realized, but then you have to defer no, because hindi pa siya realized dapat. Okay, now what about this? Ayan. Sir, why are we crediting cost of goods sold? This one came from our beginning inventory, which is overstated. Okay, so if your beginning inventory is overstated, your cost of goods sold will also be overstated. That's why you have to credit cost of goods sold by 3,200. Why is it overstated? Okay, it's stated at 8,000, but with that 8,000, nakasama po yung 3,200 because the real cost should be 4,800. Okay, now next, what about this accumulated profits January 1 parent? Kasi ganito yan, okay? Last year, it was realized by the parent when it should not be realized kasi it's not yet sold. Okay po. Kaya, ibabawas natin yan sa accumulated profits or retained earnings ng parent last year. Ayan. Eh, what about this year, sir? Na-realize naman na siya. Okay, okay lang kasi papasok naman yan sa consolidated net income. Okay, so correctly stated na po yung consolidated net income natin and consolidated retained earnings. Okay po. So, ayun. Now, let's continue. Parents intercompany sales and cost of goods sold in prior year 2011 had been close to other statement of comprehensive income accounts to parents accumulated profits. So, yun yung explanation yan. That's why you have to adjust. Ayan. So, in the consolidated point of view, the parents December 31, 2011 accumulated profits were overstated because nirealize na niya yan eh. Okay. By the unrealized intercompany profits in subsidiary inventories on December 31, 2011. Also, the unrealized profit included in subsidiary's beginning inventory was charged to cost of goods sold when subsidiary sold the inventory during the period. Okay, for thus overstating the cost of goods sold. Hmm, first in, first out, diba? If you remember. So, Okay, that elimination entry now, okay, will adjust the beginning accumulated profit and cost of goods sold. Ayan, balikan natin. We have three elimination entries. Kung tatanungin ka, what are your elimination entries if there are intercompany transactions on, on inventories? This one, hindi mawawala yan. You eliminate the intercompany sales and purchases. You debit sales because it was credited in the books of the parent or the selling affiliate, you credit purchase or cost of goods sold. Di ba? Parang reciprocal account lang yan. Laging meron yan. Okay. These two, it depends. Okay. If there are inventories in the ending balance, or if the ending balance of your inventories consists of inventories coming from this transaction, you have to record this. Okay. This one is for the deferred gross profit coming from the ending balance. Okay. What about this? Okay. You are going to record this if okay, your beginning inventories, the beginning inventory of the buying affiliate consists of inventories coming from intercompany transaction. This is for the realized gross profit coming from beginning inventory. Okay po. So, ayun. Sir, what if all of the inventories were already sold during this year? Okay, so, wala na po ito. Hindi ka na magde-defer. 
Okay, because there are no inventories coming from, or there are no ending inventories coming from your intercompany transactions. Okay, let's continue. Okay, wait lang. Let's try to simplify further pala. Naalala ko na. Uh, may question dito dati. Sir, medyo nalilito ako. Ayan. Pwede ba naming i-memorize na lang yan? Well, the answer is yes, as long as you can understand. Okay, so what are you going to memorize? Number one, the first elimination entry which is always required. What's that first elimination entry? To remove your intercompany transactions. Okay, what about the second entry? This is to eliminate your deferred gross profit. You only make this entry if there are inventories coming from intercompany transactions found in the ending balance. Kung wala, wala na to. What about this? Okay, so you also do this entry. If in your beginning inventory, okay, there were inventories coming from intercompany transaction. Gusto mo ng shortcut? Kung nag-defer ka last year, kailangan mong mag-realize this year. Okay, so ayun, nakadepende itong entry na to sa entry na ginawa mo last year. Okay, so ganun lang. And then you try to read this. Uh, let's continue. Ayan, so dito na tayo. Wala na po tayong discussion dyan. Focus tayo dito. Now if you notice, this is now added your deferred gross profit last year because it's already realized this year. Ano yung ibabawas natin? The deferred gross profit this year. So if our discussion will extend on the third year, you will expect this 3,000. Yes, correct. Okay, your 3,000 will be added here to be realized. And meron ka na namang dito if okay, there are inventories in your ending balance. There are inventories from intercompany transaction found in the ending balance of your inventory. Okay, so, okay, so that's one. Feature number one, yung dinifer mo last year, re-realize mo this year. Magdi-defer ka ulit ngayon. May re-realize mo next year. Also, wala pong share ang minority interest. So, this, okay, will go there. 100%. Let's continue. What if there is upstream sales? Uh, yan. Pag upstream, ganun pa rin. You remove the intercompany sales and purchases at 100%. Okay, sir, what about the a deferred gross profit and realized gross profit? Meron pa rin siya. It's just that this time it will be shared no, by the consolidated entity and the minority interest. So let's have an example. You have your subsidiary, okay, owned 80%, sells merchandise to parent, oh, upstream na siya, upstream na siya, Okay, subsidiary company sells goods costing 24 to parent for 30,000. Okay, so 20% profit rate. Ano kaya ito? Is it based on cost or is it based on is it based on sales? Okay, what's 20% of 30? That is 6,000. Okay, lagay natin dito sales. Si subsidiary, no? Nagbenta daw siya. It was sold for 30,000. Yung goods na ang cost lang niya ay 24,000. So, our gross profit is now 6,000. If this one is based on sales, 6 divided by 30, this one is 20%. Ah, gross profit rate yung binigay niya. Okay, at the end of the year, 8,000 of the goods purchased by the parent company from subsidiary remain unsold. Dito pa lang pwede mo nang i-compute. How much is the deferred gross profit? That will be 8,000 times times 20%. Okay, so what is 20% of 8,000? That will now be 16. 16,000. Kung downstream sales sana, lahat ito ay ibabawas in the computation of your consolidated net income. But since this is upstream sales, okay, this will be shared, okay, by the parent, so equity holding by the parent, okay, or CNI as the parent is concerned, and then you have the minority interest net income. How much is the total? 16,000. Since this one is 
80% owned. So, you multiply this by 80 and then you multiply this by 20% para naman sa mini. Let's try to do that dahil hindi na kaya ng utak ko. Mag-calculator tayo. What is 16? So, ano huwag ako magkamali. Times 0.8. Imagine, nasa YouTube yung mali ko. Kakahiya. 12,816 times 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 20% 3,000 3,200 Okay, wait lang. Baka mali na naman kayo. Nagkataon lang that your gross profit rate of 20% is the same as your minority interest rate, which is 20%. Okay? Because 80% is owned by the parent. 20% goes to your minority interest. Okay, so, ano ito? If we are going to defer this, okay, in the computation, 16,000 will be deducted in your consolidated net income, but... As far as the parent is concerned sa share niya, ang ibabawas natin or ang i-defer natin ay 12,800 and for minority interest is 3,200. This time, since it is an upstream sale, no, it's the subsidiary reporting profit from the sale made to the parent. So, what we are actually adjusting is the net income reported by the subsidiary. Okay? Earlier, Okay, in our downstream sales, ta In your downstream sale, it's the parent, okay, selling to your subsidiary. So, what we are adjusting is the parent's income from its operation. Na walang share ang minority interest. This one upstream, may share si minority interest. Kaya, may adjustment po siya doon. Paulit-ulit na lang ako. Ayan. Pero, matututo naman kayo. Now, let's see. What's this? Um, consolidated statement. This is for the intercompany transaction, okay, which is 30. Ayan. 30 and 30. Tapos, you have the um, deferred gross profit. Wait lang. 8,000 of the goods purchased by the parent company remained unsold. Okay. Ah, uh, yan. Wait lang. Tada! Bakit siya? 1,600. Mm, ganito kasi. Mm, yung mali ako. <laughs> Let's go back. Balik, balik, balik. Matayo nang magsulat. Magsulat ka naman. Ayun. Feeling ko dito ako nagkamal. Ayun! Sabi ko na nga ba eh. This one should be 8,000 times 20%. Hindi siya 16,000. It should be 1,600. Burahin ko na nga ito para hindi ako mapahiya. Tadaan! Puti na lang pala pwedeng mag-erase. Oh, ayun. Okay, so it should be 1,600. Dito na lang natin isulat. 1,600 parent subsidiary no? let's not use the parent baka mali to kayo you have the consolidated net income as far as the parent is concerned you have the minority interest net income and then you have here your total na 1,600 ah, magkano na to kayo na 1,200 makompute na natin to eh Hmm. Dapat ay 1,280 lang. Yun, 1,280 and this one will be 320. Ayun, dun po nang galing ito. Your deferred gross profit which is 8,000 times, times 20 and times 20%. Okay? Notice that the elimination entries for downstream and upstream is the same. Sir, bakit ganun? Okay. Um, full consolidation kasi tayo. Aside from adjusting the cost of sales, cost of goods sold, and inventory of 
the consolidated entity, okay, if there is, kunyari lang, if there is a consolidated, no, not consolidated, if there is a statement for the minority interest, may adjust din yun. Okay? And since wala, i-combine natin siya. So, eto, okay, para yan sa parent, or para yan sa consolidated net income, and then yung isang part para naman sa minority interest. Okay po. So, whether it's upstream or downstream, the entry is the same. Ayan. Hindi pa naman pumasok sa consolidated retain earnings at saka sa minority interest natin. Okay? Um, this, in your working paper, no? in your working paper, you still have your nominal accounts. That can be adjusted. So, lahat po yan ay papasok doon. And then, that is for the first year, pag nag-defer tayo. So, if you notice, eto na siya. Let's not discuss that anymore. Let's focus here. Because it's upstream sales, meron na nga yung share si minority interest. Kung downstream sana yan, kay the entire 1.6, kay will be adjusted here. Nasundan nyo po. Bakit ulit ganun? For downstream sales, what we are adjusting is the net income reported by the parent. Downstream parent selling to your subsidiary for upstream sales what we are adjusting is the income okay in substance no what we are adjusting is the income reported by the subsidiary upstream subsidiary selling to the parent okay and bakit sila parehong may share this time because the subsidiary's net income will be shared by ayan may part dyan pupunta sa parent may part dyan pupunta sa minority interest Nakita nyo to? Okay. Now, look at the parents' net income in this computation. Wala pong share si Mini. Ganun din kapag downstream sales. Okay? So, dapat kabisado nyo yung mga pattern na yan. Now, this one is for the first year of operation. On the following year, what you have deferred this year will be realized next year. Okay. And we have an example for that. Yan. Assume further that in 2012, subsidiary sales... Two parent companies good costing 30,000. The cost is 30. It was sold for 40. 15 of the goods purchased by parent company remain unsold at the end of 2012. So it was sold for 40 when the cost is only 30,000. So the gross profit for this is 10,000. So based on sales, okay, we can say that this is 25% gross profit rate. Now, out of this, no, goods purchased by the parents, si subsidiary yung nagbenta niyan, binenta niya kay parent. Out of this, may naiwan po tayo na magkano? Okay? 15,000. So, what is 25% of 15,000? 50 divided by 2, 3, 5, 3, 50. So, this one now is 11,250. Or we can just compute para hindi naman nakakahiya. 15,000 times 0.25. Yan na ngayon yung deferred natin. Okay po. And this is the, this should be the cost of your inventory. This is what we are going to defer. Okay po, this is the inventory sold by the buying affiliate. Okay, so let's see. Aha, uh -huh. dito na agad tayo. What is now the first elimination entry to eliminate the intercompany transaction? In this case, debit sales and credit cost of sales at 40. Next, my ending inventory ba tayo? Yes, so, ganun na naman, 100%. Just like last year, debit to cost of goods sold and credit to inventory. Okay? Bakit ulit credit sa inventory? Because your inventory, as reported by the parent, is 15,000. But attached to that is 3,750. Oh, mali, mali, mali. Tama 3,750. So the correct amount of your inventory is 11,250. So, you have to remove this from your inventory. Aside from that, since your inventory is overstated by 3750, your cost of goods sold now is understated by 3750. So, you have to increase your cost of goods sold by 3750. And in effect, you are reducing your net income, which is the expected effect, no? 
if you record your deferred gross profit. Deferred. Na-realize na. Pero hindi pa pala. So, bawiin natin. That income goes down. Now, dito tayo. Dito masaya. What about you realized? Uh, ang tanong natin dito kanina ay, did you defer some profits last year? If the answer is yes, then you're going to realize this year. Okay. So, your beginning inventory, your beginning inventory is overstated by 1,600. Therefore, cost of goods sold will also be overstated since that is still open. No, You remove that 1,600. And from last year, oh, ito na, you know, January 1, our beginning accumulated profits is the ending accumulated profits last year of the parent. Last year, the parent reported this, no? This, um, uh, Profit, pumasok siya sa retained earnings niya. Kaya dapat tanggalin natin, i-defer natin siya. Anyway, may marirealize naman ngayon. Ay, wait lang. O, oh, tama, tama, tama. Okay, eto yun. Okay, this is the effect of the realized gross profit. By deducting your cost of goods sold, in effect, your net income will increase by the realized gross profit. Same concept applies to your non-controlling interest. Okay, because it was deferred last year, Dapat in the computation of CNI, but in their own books, it was not deferred. So, yung beginning balance ang i-adjust natin. Nahinga natin dito. Beginning balance. Okay po. So, ayun. Now, itong gusto kong makita sana. Ito, um, basahin nyo na lang yan. Ito, ayan. Let's look at this. What are these? These are the amounts which were deferred last year. It was deducted. Diba? Gaya nito. Ayan. But it was realized this year. So, you're going to simply add that. And then, from your ending inventory for this year, siya na ngayon yung ibabawas natin. That's now your deferred gross profit. So, if we're going to extend no, the discussion no, for the third year, siya naman this deferred gross profit this year will be realized next year. So, yan yung iaad mo naman. Okay po? So, that's it. Okay? Unless you have any other question, no? Sir, di ko pa rin maintindihan. Okay, o, sige, eto, bonus natin. Balikan natin yung computation natin. Um, normally, summarize nga natin, we have the consolidated net income as far as the parent is concerned. Pag minsan, ito ay tinatawag natin na equity holdings of the parent okay, in the consolidated net income. Okay, ang daming ini-invento, ano? And then you have your minority interest net income, also known as your non-controlling interest in the net income of the subsidiary. And then you have here your total or just the consolidated net income. Okay, ito. Alam na natin ito. Saan papasok yung parent's net income I'm going to write here from its own operation operation when we say from its own operation operation kunyari maganda yung sulat ko okay this is the parents net income minus the dividends declared by the subsidiary or the parents net income minus the dividend income reported by the parent coming from the dividends declared of the subsidiary by the subsidiary okay or basta yung reported net income ng parent pag sinabing reported net income it includes the dividend income from subsidiary so you just remove that and you will now have the parent's net income from its own operation okay and from its own operation may share ba si minority interest wala so, lahat yan pupunta dito. Ano pa? Pag-usapan natin yung subsidiary net income. May share si parent dyan. Kung ilang percentage yung in-acquire niya, you simply uh, multiply it no by the controlling interest. Okay? And, may share din si minority interest. Multiplied by the minority interest rate. If there is no minority interest, kunyari, wholly owned siya, then wala nang pupunta dito. Pareho na po ito at saka ito. Okay? You have here your total. 100%. Alright. Next, 
let's talk about the amortization of excess. The amortization of excess okay, will be shared by the parent no, and the minority interest. Okay po. Ayan lang naman eh. Yung para sa ano eh. Sa subsequent to date of acquisition. Okay. Now you have your intercompany transaction on inventories. You can have your downstream sales. For downstream sales, parent selling to the subsidiary. Okay. Pwede kang magkaroon ng deferred gross profit or realized gross profit. Okay? So, you just have to check in your big ending na lang. In your ending inventory, were there... Oh, wait lang. Kaninong ending inventory to? This is the ending inventory found in the subsidiary, right? Because it's downstream sales. Because it's downstream sales, it's the parent selling to the subsidiary. So, in the ending balance of the inventory of the subsidiary. Meron bang inventory coming from the intercompany transaction? If the answer is yes, you get that ending inventory and multiply that by the gross profit rate. Because the inventory of the subsidiary is overstated. Okay? By the profit attached to that. And that profit was reported by the parent. Therefore, that will be considered as a deduction in the parent's reported net income. Because it is an adjustment in the parent's reported net income, parent's reported net income, walang share ang minority interest. So, all your deferred gross profit from the ending balance no, will go to your consolidated net income. Now, assuming this is the second year or the third year, you look at the beginning inventory. Beginning inventory of the parent or subsidiary? Take note, this is downstream sales. Si parent po ang nagbenta. Okay? So, dahil nagbenta si parent kay subsidiary, ang i-check natin yung subsidiary's beginning inventory. Okay? So, subsidiary's beginning inventory. Meron bang galing sa downstream sales? Sales made by the parent to the subsidiary. If the answer is yes, you get that. Not the entire beginning inventory. Ganun din dito, not the entire ending inventory, just the amount coming from the intercompany transaction. Multiply that by the gross profit rate. Okay, and that will now be your realized. Ngayon, kung ayaw mo nang mag-analyze, shortcutin pa natin. Nag-defer ka ba last year? If the answer is yes, i-realize mo this year. Because your ending balance last year will be your beginning balance this year. Wala pong share si minority interest. Lahat po yan ay i realize Nasundan niyo po ba? Lahat ng binawas last year, idagdag this year. Okay. Now, what if, loko-loko yung problem, naghalo yung downstream at upstream sales. May downstream na, may upstream pa. For upstream sales, ingat ka. This time, ano ulit yung upstream? It's the subsidiary selling to the parent. So, you have to check, no? In the ending balance of the inventory of the parent. Ayan, kasi si subsidiary yung nagbenta, no? So, if in the ending balance of the inventory of the parent, okay, there is a inventory coming from intercompany transaction or coming from this upstream sales, aha, kailangan mong mag-defer. So, you multiply that by the gross profit rate of the selling affiliate, syempre. Gross profit rate ng subsidiary. Okay. Nako, litong-lito na sila. Dito, gross profit rate ng parent. Gross profit rate ng parent. Pero, inventory ng subsidiary. Sir, bakit inventory ulit ng subsidiary? Kasi si subsidiary yung bumili. Nandun yung inventory. Eh, sir, bakit gross profit rate ng parent? Kasi si parent naman yung nagbenta. Sa upstream sales, ganun, yun, ganun din. Upstream sales, bakit ending inventory ni parent? Kasi si parent yung bumili. Bakit gross profit rate ni subsidiary? Eh, si subsidiary yung nagbenta eh. Siya yung nag-report ng profit. Kaya this time, ang ia-adjust natin is the subsidiary's 
net income na pinaghahatian ni parent o ng consolidated entity at saka ni minority interest. So, yung different gross profit mo ngayon, hahatiin mo yan sa dalawa. Ito based on controlling interest. Ito based ngayon ito sa minority interest. Okay? Ito ngayon yung 100% niya. Ayan, 100, nye. Ganun. Ayaw nang sumunod ng kamay ko. Yan yung 100% ng deferred gross profit. Nasundan nyo po. Kasi upstream, may, say, may share din si parents sa net income ng subsidiary. Okay, i-check mo rin. nag defer ka ba last year? Okay. So, punta ka sa beginning inventory ni parent. Meron bang part ng beginning inventory ni parent na galing sa intercompany transaction? Yes. So, times gross profit rate ngayon ni subsidiary. Okay. Or kung gusto mong i-shortcut, may dinifer ka ba last year? Kung meron kang dinifer last year, i-realize mo na siya this year. At dahil upstream yan, realize yan, dadagdag yan. Okay. Paano mo i-dagdag yan? Adjust mo yan sa adjustment yan sa CGS. Babawas mo. Okay. Ano ngayon ang tawag natin dito? Total. <laughs> This is now your total consolidated net income which is composed of the minority interest net income or the non-controlling interest in the net income of the subsidiary. And then you now have here your consolidated net income as far as the parent is concerned or equity holdings of the parent in the C and I. Oh, di ba? Padagdag lang ng padagdag. Okay po. So, ayun. Ngayon, um, kailangan itong schedule na to, itry nyo ulit siyang i-apply dito. O, oh, yan, di ba? Ano to? That's 100%. Times 80% siya to. Ayan, times 20% siya to. Ganun din po dito. That's 100%. 20% and you now have your 80% okay so let's see um, ano pa yung mga kailangan ninyong malaman important itong part na to guys kasi take note this one um, palitan nga natin yung kulay mag yellow naman tayo this one is a component of your consolidated retained earnings kung eto yung tinanong sa'yo at nagkamali ka dito, mali na yung consolidated retained earnings mo. This one is also a component of your minority interest. Ano yun? Yung beginning balance. Plus, yan, minority interest net income less the dividends declared you have the ending balance. Kung eto yung tinanong test nagkamali kayo dito, mali na rin po yan. Okay po. E paano pag tinanong yan, tapos tinanong din ito, yung mga ganong bagay. Now sir, ang haba-haba naman kasi, okay, pwede ba ang i-shortcut ko na lang? E, kung eto yung tinanong, eto lang yung gagawin ko. Yes, the answer is, yes. E, kung ano lang yung tinanong sa'yo, yun lang yung, yung solution mo. Pero, ang kagandaan kasi nito, kapag nasanay kang gawin ito, mas madali mong i-check kung tama yung sagot mo. At kung nagkamali ka, mas madali rin maghanap kung saan ka nagkamali. Okay, so if you want to minimize the risk of committing error or kung gusto mo nang mas madaling i-check yung error mo, I suggest, no, even if you're just computing for your minority interest net income, you try to solve, solve for this and this. Okay po, so ganun yun. Sir, ang haba-haba eh. Ang solusyon dyan, mag-practice ka para mabilis kang mag-solve. Kahit gaano kahaba ang isang solution, pag mabilis ka namang mag-solve, wala tayong problema sa oras. Okay. And ang sagot lang dyan ay, dapat meron tayong sapat na practice. Okay po? So, I guess that's it. Okay? Um, if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to um, ask them. <laughs> In the comment section, no, oh, ayan, pwede kayong magtanong sa comment section nito or uh, pwede kayong mag-comment doon sa Facebook dahil ipopost ko rin ito sa page natin. Okay, so I guess that's it and thank you.